it's one of Australia's most talked about cases, the mushroom trials. After six intense weeks and 53 witnesses and huge media interest from all over the world, the jury have decided guilty. Today, we're unpacking the science, the toxicology reports, the mushroom DNA, and of course, looking at the food that was served. On July 29th, 2023, here in her home in country Victoria, Erin Patterson served a lunch of homemade beef wellington to her estranged husband's parents and his aunt and uncle. Her estranged husband was also supposed to be at the lunch, but he pulled out at the last minute. Now, by that evening, by about 10 o'clock, all of the lunch guests became violently ill, vomiting and so sick that the next day they all went to hospital. Over the next few days, they developed acute liver failure and had to be intubated and put on ventilation. And despite intense medical treatment, three of them died. And the fourth barely made it. He was in hospital for over a month and the doctors were surprised that he came through. They thought he was gonna die. The autopsies and toxicology reports showed the cause of death to be consumption of death cap mushrooms. The question the jury had to decide was, were they put in the meal deliberately, or was this just a terrible accident? Now, here in Australia, you're not allowed to take photographs, audio or video recordings inside a court building, but you can draw pictures, so I'll do my best for you. It's only a small courtroom. The jury sits over there and the judge is here. This big table in the middle has both legal teams, the defence at one end and the prosecution at the other. And the person being questioned sits over here and these are just members of the public that have come to watch. So if we move on to the beef wellington itself. Erin says she mainly used mushrooms from Woolworths and some extra dried mushrooms. She says a couple of months earlier, she bought some dried mushrooms from an Asian grocery store in a clear plastic bag. The size was smaller than a Ziploc sandwich bag. They were sliced and had a handwritten label that said wild mushroom mix or forest mix. She wanted to use them in a carbonara, but she says they smelt funny. So instead she put them into a plastic container and into her cupboard. The police photographed this recipe book at her house and Erin confirmed that this is the recipe she used, but said she made a few changes. The primary one was I couldn't find you know, the big log that the recipe called for, so I had to use individual steaks. She said the crepe layer looked a little bit complicated, so she swapped that for phyllo pastry. It called for a layer of, of prosciutto, but I didn't do that because Don doesn't eat pork. It called for mustard, I didn't use that. She chopped the mushrooms in her Thermomix, then cooked them with the other ingredients, like it said, for a long time to get rid of the water so it doesn't make the pastry soggy. And then she said, As I was cooking it down, I tasted it a few times and it seemed a little bland to me. So I decided to put in the dried mushrooms that I bought from the grocer that I still had in the pantry. So I put them in like a little uh, a strainer with a handle. I put them in that and just roughly poured water over them to get the crispness out of them. I chopped them up and I like sprinkled them over the duck cells and pushed them in with like an egg flip. The prosecution says that Erin bought way too many ingredients. Her Woolworths Rewards account shows a week before she bought puff pastry, phyllo pastry, and a kilo of mushrooms and shallots. Then two days before the lunch, she bought more pastry, four twin packs of beef eye fillet steak, and more mushrooms. Then the day before the lunch, back to the shops for mashing potatoes, green beans, more pastry, and extra beef eye fillet steaks. They say this is because she made two versions of the dinner, one that was poisoned for her guests and one that was safe for her to eat. Erin's response to that was that she ate the other kilo of Woolworths mushrooms in the week leading up to the lunch, and she froze the other ingredients. Now, I know it looks suspicious under these circumstances to buy all of that, but it's not proof. You could explain that away by someone using the ingredients for another dish. So we can't really rely on that. And then there's the plates. So there is some secondhand evidence from the estranged husband's trip in the ambulance with his mum. He says that his mum said, why did Erin have a different coloured plate? And she asked about that twice. Now Ian Wilkinson, the sole survivor, also testified about this. He said all the plates were grey except for Erin's which was a coloured plate. The 14 year old son who cleared the table when he came home said all the plates were white. 
but when police asked him was there any food on any of the plates, he said no. So if Erin didn't eat all of her dinner, that would suggest that her plate was not still on the table when he came home. Now, it was very fortunate that the kids were not at this lunch. She had sent them to the local cinemas, saying that she needed to have an adult conversation with her guests. The sole survivor said that Erin told them at lunch that she had the results from some tests they knew she was having and that she had cancer and wanted to know whether she should tell her children or not. Now, medical records have been checked and she does not have cancer. She never had a biopsy for cancer, so this was made up. She also says the next day she fed leftovers to her kids. She said they don't like mushrooms, so she scraped off the mushrooms and the pastry and just gave them the meat. The prosecution, of course, questioned why Erin would give leftovers to her kids when all the people who ate that food were sick. Wouldn't you be worried about the food? And they implied that unless you knew that the food you were giving the kids was safe because you hadn't contaminated that one, you wouldn't do that. Mushroom experts told the police that death caps can't be grown commercially because they can only grow using the roots of certain trees. And they can't have been freshly foraged because they're not in season. Then a couple of days later, when the police did a search of her house and then took her to the station for an interview, she had this to say. We have concerns in relation to the mushrooms and where they've come from. Is that something you've done in the past, foraging for mushrooms or anything like that? Never. Never? Never. Do you preserve foods or anything like that? No. Have you ever dehydrated food or anything? No. Kitchen, far left bottom drawer, instruction manual for a Sunbeam Food Lab electronic dehydrator. What's that in relation to? You know anything about a dehydrator in your house? No. Do you own a dehydrator? No. Oh? I've got manuals of lots of stuff like that. Over the years, I've had all sorts of appliances and I just keep them all. Okay, okay. When did you own a dehydrator? Um, about eight or nine years ago. Two days later, the police retrieved her dehydrator from the e-waste facility at this tip. Before we unpack that information, I've been doing YouTube now for 14 years and over that journey there have been highs and there have been lows. If you're at a low point in your life or your career right now, feeling burnt out or like you can't achieve your dreams no matter how hard you try, you don't have to deal with that alone. It's always better to get help early rather than wait until you're in a crisis. You might be feeling stuck, anxious, overwhelmed, or your thoughts could be spiraling out of control and you're struggling to sleep. Don't hate on yourself, talk to someone about it. Therapists are trained to listen and to give you techniques to help you make positive changes in your life. Today's paid partner, BetterHelp, is on a mission to make starting therapy easier. You just fill out a questionnaire and they will match you with an appropriate therapist as soon as possible. And you can easily switch therapists anytime if they're not the right fit for you. Click on the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com forward slash how to cook that to get 10% off your first month of therapy. Now back to the case. The dehydrator found at the tip had Erin's fingerprints on it and the toxicology tests found fragments of death cap mushrooms in it. Death caps being found in the dehydrator lets us know that the mushrooms had to have come from foraged mushrooms. But it doesn't prove that it was deliberately added to the meal. It's highly suspicious because she dumped the dehydrator, but it's still not absolute proof. She also says in 2020, back in the COVID lockdowns, Melbourne was one of the most locked down cities in the world, she started foraging for mushrooms. And she says she's been foraging regularly since then, including on walks with her kids. Unfortunately, when the kids were asked whether they'd ever seen their mum go foraging or pick mushrooms, they both said no, as well as friends and her husband. They all have never heard her talk about or seen her forage for mushrooms, which doesn't mean she didn't. It just means no one else can verify that she did this as a regular thing, like she said. Now she's thinking she may have possibly put some of her dehydrated mushrooms into that same container. So she thought they were from the Asian grocery store, but they were actually a mixture of both. Now, the leftover pastry and the mushrooms that she scraped off, she told the police exactly where to find those leftovers in the bin. So they went and got those and sent them for testing. 
first they went to Dr. Camille Trong, who's a mycologist or someone who specializes in studying mushrooms. She took tweezers and picked out pieces of mushroom that she could see and looked at them under a microscope. She was specifically looking for spores. This is an Amanita muscaria mushroom. It's in the same family as death caps and it leaves a white spore print. Mushrooms can release billions of spores each day and a mycologist will look at those spores under a microscope and look at the different sizes, the different shapes and even what colours they produce with different stains to help identify what type of mushroom it is. Dr. Trong said she only found spores from field mushrooms like the ones you'd get at a supermarket and she did not find any death cap spores in the leftovers. Next, the leftovers were sent to Dr. Lovelock for DNA testing. He did what's called a DNA barcoding, which is instead of sequencing the entire DNA, which is expensive and would take a very long time, you sequence a specific portion of the DNA and then you compare that to known DNA barcodes so you know what species it is from. So in this case, the only things that he found was white button mushrooms. He didn't find anything that matched the DNA barcoding of death cap mushrooms. And he, the same as the mycologist, used pieces of mushroom that he could see to test those. So it is possible with her description of using an egg flip to push some pieces in that they could have just not picked one of those pieces. If the majority is Woolworths mushrooms, it is quite possible that they just picked out pieces of Woolworths mushrooms. Next, it was sent on to a toxicologist. Now this test is a bit more holistic because instead of just picking out one piece, you're taking a sample of the paste sort of more as a whole. Then you use liquid to dissolve out everything from there and then you test that liquid to see if it has any amatoxins in it. And he found that yes, this sample did contain amatoxins, which are the toxin that are produced by the death cap mushrooms. And he told the jury that a lethal dose of amatoxins is 0.1 milligrams per kilogram. Or for a 70 kilo person, that's equivalent to eating 50 grams of death cap mushrooms or about three tablespoons. Now, I like to be able to see things for myself, so let's do an experiment. Erin made six beef wellingtons, and we know the person who only ate half still died. So half a beef wellington has to contain a lethal dose, so 50 grams of death caps. So for all six, we need 50 grams times 12, or 600 grams of death cap mushrooms. If we use these oyster mushrooms as an example, I only have 300 grams here. So this is only enough for three of the beef wellingtons, not all six. Add them to the container on top of the ones from the Asian grocer. Wow, that's a lot. And this is only half of what we need. Then remember she said, I put them in like a little, uh, a strainer with a handle. I put them in that and just roughly poured water over them to get the crispness out of them. I chopped them up and I like sprinkled them over the duck cells and pushed them in with like an egg flip. Now remember, we only have enough of the dehydrated mushrooms for half the amount, so I can only put it on half of it. It's not exactly sprinkling it on, is it? In fact, if you took the weight before you dehydrated it, this is the same amount of death cap mushrooms as there is Woolworth mushrooms. It's a whole nother layer, which makes it a lot less likely that the mycologist and the guy who did the DNA testing missed all of this. The other problem this highlights is that whole extra layer was not cooked with the garlic and the onion and the butter. It's not a paste. It's just like this layer of chopped up mushrooms. And when my family ate this, Matthew, who loves mushrooms, scraped it all off because it just, it wasn't a paste. It was like this dry layer of chopped up mushroom. It wasn't very nice. Now, if you're thinking, well, but that's oyster mushrooms. Maybe the uh, Amanita mushrooms are heavier or denser and it's not as big an amount. This Amanita mushroom, which is from the same family as death caps, weighs 30 grams. So you'd need three of these in each individual beef wellington. And knowing that, you would know she needs a lot of death cap mushrooms for this recipe. A year before the lunch, the prosecution found that on her computer, someone had searched for iNaturalist. And then when they went to that website, they then typed in death cap mushrooms on the world map and then zoomed in on Australia and then zoomed in on her area in Victoria. 
If you've never heard of iNaturalist, it has a website and an app where anyone in the community can take photos of nature, things like birds, insects, plants, animals that you've seen, and post it to the website. The app can also help you to identify what it is that you're seeing, and you can even get the app to alert you when a particular thing is found within an area that you've set. On April 18, a user uploaded photos of death cat mushrooms in Locke, and they removed them because they were poisonous. 10 days later, Erin's mobile phone pinged off a tower in Locke. And two hours later, she went to this Hartley Wells to buy a dehydrator. A month later, a different user posts photos of death cap mushrooms in Outram. And two days after that, Erin's mobile phone pings off a mobile phone tower in Outram. Now, if you're wondering how on earth could you find something as small as a mushroom from a photo on a website, the iNaturalist website takes a precise geolocation from where the photo was taken. And on top of that, the death cap mushrooms only grow in connection with oak trees. So you just have to spot the oak tree from the geolocation. And once you've found that, you know where the death cap mushrooms were growing. Now, the defense, of course, says there is no proof that Erin ever saw those two posts of death cap mushrooms in her area. And there's no proof that she actually went to the specific geolocations, just that she was in those suburbs. The prosecution says the reason there's no proof is that they don't have her mobile phone. You see, on the day that she dumped the dehydrator, she also did a factory reset of a phone that she had. And when the police did the search of her house and asked her for her phone, she gave them that phone. But on CCTV footage of the hospital and from phone records, they know she actually had a different phone that she was using and that phone has never been recovered. If you were on the jury, what would you have decided? With thanks to my patrons for your amazing support. Really, really appreciate you guys. Make it a great week by being kind to others and I'll see you on Friday.